Good morning. Welcome to Friday. It's Friday. I'm not sure if you've got a ton of stuff to get done today before the weekend or if you're kind of cruising into the weekend, but it's Friday regardless of what you have planned for the day. And uh, we are starting our day with God, being intentional with him here on the daily race. And uh, we're doing the countdown to Christmas. We're on day 10 of the countdown. Uh, I don't know about you, but it feels like December is flying by. Um, there's just, not that we feel brand, like we have a bunch of stuff to do, but we just enjoy the season. Like I, I want it to slow down. We have so much fun stuff playing with family and just relaxing evenings that we want to have. And it's just flying by. That's all there is to it. We're on day 10 though. And we are walking through uh, essentially the, the story, God's redemptive story. Um, how the whole Bible is really telling the story of Christmas, why Jesus had to come. Uh, today we're on day 10, and it, it says this. Most people are familiar with the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm not saying that we have them memorized or printed somewhere in our homes as a checklist of doing things right. But most of us have a general awareness of the fact that these rules have existed for a very long time and have served as a basis for how humans should behave. These foundational laws serve as a basis for most Western cultures to this day. When God gives the Ten Commandments to his people, it's further clarification of his promise. For the first time, there are some explicit terms in his covenant. The covenant he makes with Abraham and confirms with Isaac and Jacob promises that he would create a great nation from their offspring, and through their heirs, he would send the Savior. The law God is now giving is the terms, uh, now giving them, served as the terms or conditions of this covenant. Through the miraculous acts of God, Moses leads the people out of Egypt towards the promised land of Canaan. This is the land God had given Abraham and has passed on to Isaac and then Jacob, who had to leave it because of the famine. They are now on their way back. A great nation is formed just as God promised. Moses is leading the 12 tribes of Israel, numbering about a million people. While camped at the base of Mount Sinai, God, gives, God calls Moses up onto the mountain. It's there that he delivers to him the Ten Commandments, written on stone tablets. From Exodus chapter 20, You must have no other gods but me. You must not make or worship an idol of any kind. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor. God, God does not expect that the people will be perfect from this point on. He knows that the nature of man is bent towards sin, disobeying his commands and desires. So God gives his people the rest of the law. It is the law, in this law is the sacrificial system, which answers the question, what do I do when I mess up? God is a loving God and desires community with his people. He is also perfect and holy and cannot associate with sin. We are sinful people. We break his rules and create a divide between God and us. Sin needs to be removed from our lives in order to have a relationship with God. The problem is that there's nothing we can do to remove sin. Good deeds don't erase bad deeds. In fact, one of the other attributes of God that comes into play here is the fact that he has a perfect sense of justice. He cannot let sin go unpunished. A penalty must be paid for sin. The Savior will ultimately pay the penalty for, the sin, for sin when God sends him. Until then, God sets up the sacrificial system for his people. When they break one of God's commands, they need to go to the house of worship and make a sacrifice in order to pay that penalty. This sounds very ritualistic, and in many ways it is. There are many guidelines and specific ways that these sacrifices are to be made. If it isn't done exactly right, God would not accept the sacrifice. However, at the center of the system is a deep and necessary component of personal faith. The faith is placed in the future hope that God is sending the Savior. They are obediently following God's desires and command with a faith that is a shadow or a picture of how God will eventually save mankind from their sins. In Romans chapter 4, it says this, If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Abraham believes God's promises and acts accordingly by faith. It isn't his deeds and actions that make him right before God, it's his faith. The same is true today. However, the difference is we look back in time at what the Savior did versus looking forward 
to the promise of what the Savior will do. The reason that God promised the Savior to us was because of mankind's sin that separates us from God. Because God loves us, he doesn't want us to be separated from him, so he promised to send Jesus to pay the penalty for our sin. The big question is, what is sin? If there are rules that God wants us to follow, what are they? God lovingly gave us the Ten Commandments so that we would know what he expected from us. We know that he loves us because when we follow these rules, they keep us from hurting others and ourselves. God, we love you. And we thank you that you love us enough to let us know your expectations. God, what, what you expect us to do and, and feel and, and think and the motives behind them. And God, more importantly, we see that these rules are designed to protect us, uh, to not just protect the people around us, but to protect us from harm, the damage that happens to us when we step out of bounds. God, may we always see your perfect plan in this, that you are a loving God. You don't give us rules to restrict, you give us rules to protect. May we view them that way. God, I pray as we wrap up this week, God, for each and every person listening right now as they they go about their day. God, I pray that you would just work in and through them, uh, whether it's in their home, at their workplace, out in the community, wherever you've placed them today, may your light shine through them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great, great rest today. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to this weekend. I'm looking forward to Sunday being with you. Uh, I will be teaching in Goodyear. Pastor Darius and Pastor Zach Diaz will be teaching in Buckeye. And uh, we're going to be talking about the light that shows the way. The Light of the World is a series where we're going to talk about how when Jesus, uh, the, the Christmas narrative, and specifically about the light that guided the wise men and how God still wants to guide us today. I'm excited about the message. Pastor Darius and myself and Zach have been uh, talking about it a lot, praying a lot about it, and uh, I am looking forward to it. So you do not want to miss church this weekend. Whether you're attending at one of our campuses in Goodyear and Buckeye or you're jumping online, uh, looking forward to seeing you then. Have a great rest of the day. See you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.